beauties of being in this town is we also get to work with the Midway guys, the San Diego and Space Mew guys, and some uh, private museum folks. We had to fabricate spars and we we're getting close to the process of uh, rebuilding and manufacturing things like these ribs here, but if we're inside the internal... And the reason we're here is we're here to tell the Marine story of the Marine Corps Aviation. This is the only museum in the world dedicated to Marine Air. That's our scope of collections, that's what we concentrate on. We uh, originated up in Marine Corps Air Station El Toro in 1999 when they had to BRAC the uh, base realignment and closure program. Uh, El Toro was closed, they moved everything down here including the museum and we stood up again. Right now we're in our temporary uh, building. They're in the process of trying to get uh, authority to build another building here so we can get all these artifacts and these airplanes out of the weather and in on display and inside a building. working in teams as well as working individually on the project. The teams are getting together right now to do the space planning and putting it in AutoCAD. Individually, each person will be doing a different interactive exhibit. They're going to basically each team will create a space plan, but they've been given the personal freedom to change that on an individual basis if they want to. Okay. Um, my name is Logan Beeler and I'm a graphic design major at AIOC. Um, the museum is great. Like, it's very, I think it's very like bare bones right now, just kind of showcasing airplanes and showcasing some tech, and so it's it's kind of at its basic stage. I, I kind of saw a lot of opportunities for interactivity. Usually at any given time we have about 35 airplanes on display, sometimes we'll go up to 40. I have some airplanes that are uh, in, in storage right now, but because of the delicate airframe, they have doping fabric uh, control surfaces or hand polished, or they have wood rotors or stuff like that, I keep them in storage. And on special events, I'll bring the airplanes out. Well, the, the satisfaction of uh, taking something that was, a lot of people consider it would be junk and unsavable, and turning into something that is darn close to original, if not uh, as good as the original airplane when it came out of the factory. That's the goal. I'm often asked uh, about my memories from combat. Uh, for me, and I think for all of the crew chiefs, those of us who uh, crewed the helicopters in Vietnam especially, the most memorable were always the medical evacuation missions. Marine aviation, uh, well, per first off, it was a necessity and, uh, you know, uh, Lieutenant Cunningham, our very first pilot, 1912, he he was inspired by aviation uh, even before we had a marine aviation element. Uh, he had rented a, a, a so-called airplane back in Philadelphia when he was stationed there and uh, never did, was able to fly it. He, you know, he tr attempted to fly it on many occasions but could never get it airborne and, and so he never flew until he petitioned uh, as, as the Navy was starting to train uh, aviators. Uh, Lieutenant Cunningham petitioned to uh, be allowed to go to uh, flight training and, and was allowed to. He became our first Marine pilot. He was a naval aviator number five, Marine pilot number one. They're numbered uh, uh, consecutively as they graduate from flight school. And uh, so he was naval aviator number five. Uh, he got married shortly thereafter, and uh, unfortunately his wife didn't care for aviation, thought it was uh, inherently dangerous, which it was, and uh, so he turned his wings in and didn't fly for a number of years, and then uh, found that he missed it uh, so much that he uh, convinced his wife that he was, uh, he was born to fly and, and, uh, and got his wings back and, and was very instrumental in the development of Marine Air.
Uh, I, I think our biggest pat on the back is when we see one of the guys who actually flew the airplanes or worked on the airplanes when they come by and they see the, the quality of work we've done. Well, I'm very honored to be working on something with this high of a historical value, being the only one in the world. To me, it's just, it's very fulfilling and it's very satisfying, satisfying to be working on this. But personally, this is my way of giving something back to the Marine Corps. And they, they, you can see the memories coming back out and you can see the response we get from that old veteran. We know we've done our job.